G'day, LoRa is a really cheap new wireless technology that has a theoretical maximum range of 500 kilometers. But what sort of battery drain would you expect from LoRa? Find out in this quick video. You know, when I was in kindergarten, I was called the Flash. Not because I was lightning fast, but because I was so slow. Hey. Okay children, the bell's gone. It's time to pack up. Oh. But as I get older, I seem to be getting faster. It's pretty cool actually. Although my better half gets a little bit annoyed at me sometimes. Can't you just get in the car like a normal person? Can you stop doing that? I'm sorry. If you've been watching my mailbag segments, you would have noticed a bunch of RF modules arriving, like Bluetooth, NRF 24s, and also LoRa. I'll be running similar battery drain videos on all the wireless technologies, so stay tuned. What's so great about LoRa? Well, it's cheap, it's low power, and long range. That ticks all the boxes for makers, and no surprise we're onto it like flies to a carcass. Oh hang on, that's a bad analogy. Most of the chips you get will of course be based on Semtex SX1272, 76 or 78 versions. And if you mount it on top of a high tower, you could be seeing ranges of up to a theoretical 500 kilometers. Wow. Even using just a one meter high aerial will see you reach almost eight kilometers. Nice. No wonder why it's popular with makers. LoRa does have a competitor, which is Sigfox. Technically, they are both very different. LoRa is a wideband spread spectrum technology, while Sigfox uses narrowband binary phase shift keying, or BPSK modulation. LoRa uses a chirp modulation preamble to acquire signal locking, while Sigfox relies on its BPSK modulation. Anyway, I won't go into too much detail on this technology in this video, as I'll be here all day. All I'm looking at is battery drain. I had a bunch of Arduino Leonardo's hanging around, so I hooked up a LoRa module to each of them. These use an SPI interface with 3.3 volt logic levels. On the transmitter side, I used a voltage and current logger, which I'll be doing a review of later. It has a simple connection in and connection out. Then I wrote some quick and dirty code to transmit packets out at varying lengths from 1 to 256 bytes. I started out first with these options, which is designed for long range, high battery utilization. Now the LoRa specs mention that it will draw up to 120 milliamps during transmit at full power. Most of the Arduino boards have a voltage regulator that can't deliver that sort of current. But powering the LoRa module directly from the board does work, sort of. On the resulting graph of voltage and current over time, you can see the incrementing packet size being transmitted but there's a four volt spike during transmits. This is one of the side effects of the overcurrent protection on the voltage regulator, and it isn't a good scenario. So I used my bench power supply set to 3.3 volts and wired it directly into the 3.3 volt header pin. This isn't a good scenario either, but works sufficiently well to avoid any possible transmitter dropouts. So what results did I see? Well, first of all, everything was in spec, the LoRa module was being supplied with enough current. Apart from the unusual spike in both, current draw sat at around 1.7 milliamps, while idle and little over 80 milliamps during transmit. Nice. During the three hour test run, it consumed a total of almost 200 milliamps, which equates to 62 milliamp hour average consumption. This means if you have a 2000 milliamp hour battery, it'll last around 32 hours being hammered the whole time. So what about changing the radio to be low range, high data rate, and low battery impact? With this configuration, there's less airtime, which means the LoRa module spends less time transmitting the data you want. You can see much shorter transmitter bursts. And what about the battery consumption? Over the three hour test, it consumed 143 milliamps, which equates to an average of 43 milliamp hours. If you had a 2000 milliamp hour battery, it'll last around 46 hours, almost 50% better than the long range setting. Even so, LoRa seems to be still very low power considering the range you can get out of it. No wonder it's so popular. 
If you're interested in seeing how other wireless technologies compare, then stay tuned for some more quick videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.